we're taking a little bit of a uh, segue to understand what is meant by open education resources, since this is a big experiment for us to be writing this text. And so in this video, you will be learning the following skills. You will describe the concept behind open education resources or OER. You will summarize the five R's of OER. You will identify the different types of OER licenses and how they can be used. And you can discuss the strategy behind the different license styles. So let's get going on this. So we summarized this before in a previous video, but the five R's principle of OER is really quite important. OER, as we remember, is open education resources, and this could be texts, videos, photographs, pieces of um, curriculum or assignments or assessments. It could be even internet-based code or different templates that people could be using um, through Excel to be able to do teaching and learning in a free and accessible way. And so OER as a philosophy is really about having education as a resource that's freely accessible, open and um, usable by any sort of user. And there are some key principles, these five R's principles that users can retain the materials after they've used them, that they can reuse them as they see fit. They can revise them or remix them. So revising or remixing could be things like translating or taking a chapter and putting it into a new course package. And they can redistribute that content. Now, you may have a few questions saying, but wait a second, if you're the author of an OER or you're someone who's using it, how do you make sure that you're doing it correctly? Because it's not this quite the same as a traditional copyright. And so they do have a few different licensing styles. Now you'll notice first that there's what this, uh, you'll see the CC symbol up here, and that stands for Creative Commons. And under the Creative Commons, there are these different licensing styles. So the first one is attribution. And this is where, as someone using Creative Commons, if you put an attribution um, statement on, that you want to make sure that people who are using your content at least give you the credit for developing that original content. So attribution, you have to state this was content developed by this person. So they have to name you. And that's a request that we are honoring within Creative Commons. The second symbol that's common is called no derivative works or ND. And this is where you ask people who are using it, that they use it in the exact same format that you developed it. So they're taking an identical copy of what you made and not then remixing it or uh, restructuring it in any way. So no derivative works is the second one. The third one is share alike. And this is a symbol that indicates that you want people to use the exact same licensing style that you have. So for example, if you want attribution and someone is to take your content and put it into their course package or into their learning platform, that they're giving attribution. And if they're adding to it, that they are as well are following that same attribution basis. <clears throat> if you have a no derivatives work, that if someone's taking your work and repositioning in their course, that that no derivatives work uh, follows forward if you're using a share alike. And the last one is non-commercial. And this is where you ask that if people are taking your content and copying it or redistributing it, that they're not doing it for commercial purposes. So for example, if you were to write a online textbook, that you are making sure that people are not able to then go and make a copy of it and sell it as a new textbook. And so these are recombined, these four different uh, subtypes of, of um licensing within Creative Commons can be combined into a few different combinations. And so you'll see on the, the left hand of this image, we've got um, straight up just by attribution, and then we have by attribution and share alike. We've also got attribution with non-commercial, attribution with no derivative, and then combination where attribution, non-commercial, and share alike, or attribution, non-commercial, and no derivatives. So you will see these quite commonly in different combinations on different pieces of Creative Commons uh, content. And so most of the content personally that I'm developing is attribution and non-commercial so that I don't want people to be taking my content and uh, charging money for it. 
Um, and I would like to have my name attached to it so that people can come and collaborate with me and do some more good work. Every content developer does it slightly differently. The last one that's under Creative Commons is to put something into public domain. And this is where you allow people to use and remix and uh, reposition content as they see fit. And this one is this one is somewhat common. But uh, for more academic content, there tends to be the attribution basis because especially when it's authoritative content, um, the professors, academics, they tend to want to have some way to be able to track the usage of the content that they're putting out there into the public space. And so public domain is out there, but it's more common where you'll see it on photographs or you'll see it on sound bites and not so much on authoritative academic content. So those are those different license styles. Now, why pick one type over the other? Um, a lot of it comes down to the philosophy of your content generation. And I find that most of the people who I've interacted with who are OER content developers, they tend to be doing it because they believe that knowledge is power and that by sharing knowledge in a free way that we're going to be increasing the good that's in this world. Um, that sounds very, very uh, lovely and wonderful to think about, but I think most of us who are in OER are in a position where we're very fortunate that we've got secure academic jobs and we're able to put that content out there into the public good. Um, but in many cases, for example, we maybe want to having an attribution on our license because we want to make sure that if things are being remixed, that there's an ability to go back to the original experts that were creating that content to make sure that the essence isn't lost in that, in that process. So attribution is common in academic content development because the other one being, in many cases, professors need to be able to prove that they've been out doing academic activities and they want to make sure that there's ability to have attribution to content and in some cases, impact factors to be able to say, here's where my content has gone and how it's influenced other people. Um, another factor that's commonly used is the share alike, where you want to make sure that people aren't just going and pirating content for commercial text in particular, where um, in many cases, um, I've seen this happen where someone has created OER and then someone creates an online course taking the OER and they're charging money for people to be able to use that OER content for the private course that gives a certificate of completion. Um, and so making sure that OER content is being used in a way that doesn't undermine the original philosophy that knowledge is out there for the public good. Last but not least, we often do see, especially on many academic texts, the non-commercial, where you in many cases, these OER texts were developed through volunteerism, where professors were contributing their time through um, various initiatives, but often in unpaid work. The professors are lucky to have um, good, uh, secure jobs, and so they feel that they can put the content out there and do it as a volunteer initiative. And then when someone goes and takes that content and puts it into a copyright uh, text, after someone has put it out there into the public good, it's monetizing someone's volunteerism. And that wasn't the original philosophy. And so you have to be really deliberate. I don't want to sound negative towards the the, the for-profit publishing sector because there is an important role for that to, to play. Um, but jumping back to that core philosophy that I mentioned in a previous video, um, a number of organizations, UNESCO being one of the, the uh, biggest champions for this have been saying that there is certain knowledge that needs to be out there for the success of humanity as a whole. And this is a really good area for individuals to be focusing on OER initiatives. And I just happen to believe that if we do not have skilled people in agri-food, we are going to have a problem. So let's get some more OER out there and I'm doing my part. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to be jumping into some more content on food safety management and exploring it from an OER lens and having some fun in the process. So I look forward to your comments and we'll talk to you soon.